Creating a new Dynamics 365 marketing event is pretty straightforward, but there's a few things you're going to want to think about. We're going to walk you through the process of the creation of a single event here today and just talk you through some of those fields. This won't necessarily be a full end to end of all the different options you have with all the different kinds of events, but it is a high level overview of what you're going to experience as you create events in this application. So before we get started with a brand new event, I want to call out this new from template and it's exactly what it sounds like. You have the ability to create a template and it's going to pull a selection of the metadata from that event forward. So when you create it in the future, it's going to pull all that data in for you. We're actually going to hone in on the template experience in a separate video. So be sure to watch that if you want to understand how that works. For a new event, we're going to go ahead and create a new internal training event today. So I'm going to go ahead and click new and it's going to open up our event record. A lot of this information is stuff that you've probably already thought about as you're thinking about and planning the event. Now we're just going to input this data. And so we're going to go ahead and do that quickly today. So name of the event is going to be internal D365 uh, sales training. And so we now have the ability to select the event type. And so this, you'll see a small drop down menu here, a number of different choices. This does not change anything on the event record itself or the experience that you're gonna have. This is purely metadata so that we can do things like filter and build dashboards and say, hey, let's look at all the training events. Look, let's look at all the demonstration events we have and so on and so forth. So for this one, we're gonna pick training. We're now gonna go ahead and schedule the event. And so the event, we can pick the time zone and you can see we have a pretty extensive list of time zones. And so we're gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna just leave that the way it was. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the date. So we wanna book this just a couple of weeks out for a one o'clock afternoon start. And you'll notice that we get an error message here because the end date of this event cannot be before it actually begins, which is pretty logical. So it's kind of nice that they call this out as an error because it prevents that data entry error from happening. Right? We're in autopilot, we're moving through quickly. It's easy to make little mistakes like that. Go ahead and pick the 15th. And we know this is gonna be a two hour, uh, sorry, a one hour training. So it's gonna end at 2 p.m. So I've updated that information. You'll notice a countdown in days that's going to populate once we save the record and show us how many days out this event is. We have a recurring event option, and this is going to give you a very Outlook-esque experience, right? You can pick the recurrence, how often it recurs, when it's recurring. You can set an end date or after so many occurrences for it to stop. So some pretty handy functionality there. I'm going to go ahead and set that to no because we don't need that for the purposes of this example. Now we have this stream this event option, which is really, really handy, right? Especially in this day and age, streaming of events is the mainstay in business meetings. So we're going to go ahead and toggle this to yes. And you'll see it's gonna pause for a minute and then it's gonna give us a small selection of options. And we have the ability now to pick either a Teams webinar, a Teams live event, a Teams meeting or other. We can actually set up our uh, other providers if we wish. We're actually gonna do a deeper dive into the, what it looks like with a stream event in a separate video. So be sure to tune into that. For this purpose of this example, we're just going to leave that as a Teams meeting. The URL and Teams meeting owner is going to stay locked and it's going to populate once we save this. It's an out-of-the-box integration with our existing O365 or M365 uh, Teams setup, which is really, really handy. So we don't have to do any special go create the meeting somewhere else and pull it in here. It's going to do all that for us, which is really handy. Call it a couple things on the right hand side so we can schedule a building. So if we had a large you know, complex or, or a campus for our company, we could specify which building it is in or even which room. Uh, in this scenario, we don't need to do that. We do want to maybe set maximums for this event so we could set a capacity and we have the ability to waitlist this event. So if we say this is a maximum of 100 people, what will happen is we can tell it to waitlist this event or not here. If we say no, then when registration's full, it's full and that's it. If we say yes, it'll begin a waitlist for that event and it will automatically allow somebody in if we say yes or no. So there's there's a number of features that show up when we say yes to this. For the purposes of the, this example, we're gonna leave it just like this because we don't need a waitlist or anything like that for an internal training, but we could action those fields. And again, we're trying to keep this video short and sweet so that you get kind of the high level, but understand that this is an option. There's some great tools uh, around this and we're gonna put some information in the description with links to some of the Microsoft Docs and learn material that would be helpful there. So this is essentially it. We're going to go ahead and save this record. 
and that's going to refresh. It's going to take just a second, and you'll notice a couple of things are going to happen once it comes back to life. So namely, on the right-hand side, over here, the Teams URL and Teams Meeting Owner are going to get populated right away. And there they are. We've got the, um, the specifics around this. We were using our, our one of our demo accounts for this, so that's our Ali Jamison account. And so it's set up the meeting. It's gone ahead and created a Teams URL. We can now embed this when people register into a customer journey that will send them the detail. And we can actually send them a custom link that's just for them. So a check-in link so that we can get that meeting on uh, kicked off when they join. And it'll actually track that they did in fact attend, which is really, really handy. We're going to cover some of those details in the registration and attendance video. So stay tuned for that in a separate video. So now we have the ability to build out an agenda. Now for an, a, an event like this, like an internal training, perhaps we don't have one. Now, if we were to do a training afternoon, we might have an afternoon filled with a number of different sessions inside of that event. We could actually go in and schedule these for us. And we've got this calendar view. We can go ahead and schedule new sessions and say, hey, you know, the beginning of this, this event is going to be the intro session. And then we're going to do uh, opportunity management and then business process flow management and so on. We could actually build those as sessions and we could allow people to pick and choose which ones they want to attend. We could make them all on the list so that they have to kind of go through the whole training and go one, two, three, four, you know, through all the sessions. We're just doing a, tr a one hour training meeting or event and so we're just going to leave it at that it's going to be a one hour meeting and we're going to collect registration from people which i'm going to show you in a minute we got the website and form so this is going to go ahead when we put this event to live it'll actually create a event url which is where people can then pull up this event and they would then have the ability to register and so that's where we'd start to see the ability for people to click register for this event and they could put in their information it would collect them and then again we could create that customer journey that says hey when somebody registers for this event go ahead and send them that confirmation it's important to note that a confirmation does not out of the box come out of this system. So there isn't, they're not going to get something when they register unless you set that up. That's a really important aspect because in, in many cases for myself included, as I was looking through this, I expected there to be an automatic confirmation. And so important for you to have a look at that and sort of think about that in your planning stage. What is it going to look like when somebody registers for the event? We're going to want to create a, you know, a segment that's going to capture this person. And then that segment can be embedded in that customer journey that will send them an information or send them a confirmation right out of the gate. Okay. So some great features and functions there. Um, we also then have the registration and attendance. And so as this event gets built out, we have the ability to build these passes in. Now, again, for this kind of example, we don't need that. But if we were doing a conference, we might have specific passes, right? A day one pass, a day two pass. So really handy to have this. You might have a, maybe you have a contest of some sort and people get a, a discounted rate. And so you could set that up, right? And that kind of thing in here. We have event registrations. So as people are registering for this event, they're going to show up. Now we have a whole video focused on registration and attendance. So pull that up because it's going to show you the details of how this works. And when somebody registers for that event online, that data is coming directly into this platform, which is really great. We have the event check-ins, as I mentioned, when we have a stream event, for example, it's going to automatically give them that link when we embed it into the customer journey. When they click that link, it's going to then confirm for us here, yes, they came and they had checked into that event. If you're doing an on-site event, you could actually have that part of your registration check-in process. They get scanned, their QR code or their registration gets checked in, and they now have a check-in record in here. So you can see, hey, here's how many people registered, here's how many people actually showed up. If anybody cancels the registration, you're going to see those down at the bottom. We also have the additional information tab. So you can see things like expected outcome and primary goal and description. These are just, again, metadata elements or aspects about this event record. This is where your sort of your adoption and training comes into play, where you, you have highlighted for everybody, hey, these are the fields we fill in. If you're administering the system, you're removing the things that are, ne are not necessary so that people aren't looking at clutter. In this case, to say, hey, we want expected outcome. I'm going to go ahead and put something I've already typed in here. Attendees have a good grasp with the basics of D365 sales. That's the expected outcome of this training. We could go then through, sweep through here, what's the revenue, what's you know the, the cost and all of that kind of stuff into this record as we see fit. That is then all data that is stored against this record. 
There's plenty of other things like room reservations. We've got speakers and waitlist items, hotel room allocations, plenty to play with in here in terms of setting and managing your event. Again, this is all about your strategy. So this, the, a lot of these things are things you've thought about ahead of time as you plan your event. And this is just about setting the event up in here. It's overall a very straightforward experience, but it's really important that you have a plan for what information are we tracking and how are we inputting that into the system, right? So putting setting that strategy up will help you as you go through the process here. Plenty of other aspects with respect to D365 marketing coming up in other videos specific to the event management components. So please stick around for those. We're gonna be releasing one a week over the course of the next few weeks so that you have a collection of videos to work through. We've also put some links in the description to the docs and learn material, as I mentioned earlier, lots of great resources there. So please use those to look up further detail. And as mentioned in previous videos, you can spin up a trial of D365 marketing. It's really quite straightforward and go ahead and spin that up. And then you can get hands on with the application and get to know how all of this works. But hopefully we've given you a good little overview of how to create just a very basic event to start. And you can kind of grow the complexity of the kinds of events you're working with here as you go. If you have any questions about what you've seen here today or anything in the D365 or the Microsoft 365 space, feel free to reach out to the team here at C5 Insight. We would be happy to chat with you. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more and have a great day.